CDC data shows the U.S. averaged more than 149,000 new COVID cases over the last seven days. Some states are now moving to once again tighten their COVID restrictions to help ease the strain on our nation's health care system. Skylar Henry reports. I can't do it anymore. I just can't. Nurse Amber Rampey has been working in the COVID unit at Northeast Georgia Medical Center for the past 20 months. She thought the worst of the pandemic was behind her. And although I'm used to people dying, I'm just not used to this many dying. Her hospital is now treating patients in the hallways and inside ambulances because the ICU beds are filled. Next door, Florida is leading the nation with nearly 11 new COVID deaths every hour. And now health experts are warning about a potential twindemic during the upcoming flu season. In an average year, the flu causes 30 to 60,000 deaths. 300 to 600,000 hospitalizations and 10 to 15 million doctor visits. So you couple that with COVID-19 and it can really strain the system. And then there's the fact we don't know what happens when you get both. Is it a double whammy and getting people more sick? So we certainly are afraid. As the latest surge intensifies, more governments are imposing tougher restrictions, hoping to slow the spread of the virus and ease some of the pressure off of the nation's health care system. Pennsylvania has issued a mask mandate for all K through 12 schools. Healthcare workers in Colorado must be vaccinated by the end of October at the condition of employment. Misinformation is, is literally killing people. People are making medical dis decisions off of things that are not true and it is costing them their lives. And today, the San Diego Board of Supervisors is voting on a policy declaring public health misinformation a public health crisis. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. Dr. Hillary Fairbrother is an emergency medicine physician. She joins me now from Houston. Dr. Fairbrother, uh, welcome. Let me just ask you, um, you are joining us from Texas, where more than 8,400 new infections were reported Monday, according to state health department data. How are hospitals coping? Well, Elaine, it feels like we're playing with one of those sliding puzzle games where you can move exactly one piece at a time, only right into the spot vacated by the piece before. We don't have enough space and our resources are, are strained to the extreme. And this is coming uh, and being put on a healthcare team that's already exhausted by anyone's standard. I don't even hear my team members speaking about being burned out anymore. It's just taken for granted that everyone is burnt out and exhausted. And now we try to focus on ways that we can keep ourselves well and take care of each other as we watch more and more of our healthcare team really suffer uh, through the strain of taking care of patients during this pandemic. Yeah, it is just an enormous strain. An analysis from the CDC found the vaccine's effectiveness against hospitalization decreased over time in adults 75 and older, but still remained above 80 percent. What do you think this says about the need for booster shots in more vulnerable Americans? So I would say in general, we are still figuring it out when it comes to booster shots, but I don't think anyone is going to be surprised when the CDC recommends between a six month to eight month uh, booster with the COVID-19 uh, COVID vaccine from either Moderna or Pfizer or Johnson & Johnson. It does seem through preliminary data that those booster shots amplify the body's immune response and increase the immune uh, response ability to prevent infection, excuse me, and serious infection. It's, so that's very promising. It's also seemingly very important for our elderly and our immunocompromised whose immune systems do not seem to maintain good response and, and good effectiveness um, as well as younger patients do uh, over time. Well, how concerned are you about this potential so-called twindemic of the flu and COVID-19 in the coming weeks and months? And do we know how safe it is to receive both a COVID and flu vaccine? So there has been no data that shows that there should be anything remotely unsafe in receiving both the flu and the COVID vaccine. I imagine that there will be explicit recommendations soon as the flu vaccine is rolled out. 
Um, I know personally at our at our hospitals, both vaccines are going to be mandatory for healthcare staff. So you'll be seeing many people in healthcare receiving both vaccines. Um, as to the serious nature of this twin uh, pandemic, that is, we will see. I. We saw last year with increased social distancing and masking and folks working from home that the flu was very much decreased in its seriousness. And there were many fewer patients who received um, any kind of flu infection or any, many fewer patients who were infected with the flu who had any kind of serious consequences. The number of cases was the lowest that we've seen in a very, very long time. Now this year, obviously, populations are much more open and, and people are seeing their friends and their families and their loved ones. Uh, all sorts of different societies and communities are open now, and, and that is important as we move through this pandemic, but that by nature is going to increase our number of annual flu infections. And we will see how that how that affects people when they have both flu and the coronavirus infection at the same time. I think we can correlate data from children who've had both the RSV virus with the COVID virus at the same time. And we have seen more serious infections in our young children who are susceptible to both of those uh, infections at the same time. I would say certainly it won't be better to have both at the same time, but the serious, of, serious nature of it is yet to be seen. Well, the White House Coronavirus Task Force said the U.S. is averaging almost 900,000 shots a day. That is up 80 percent from mid-July. When do you think we could start to see new cases and hospitalizations start to level out or decrease? I am hoping that that will be very soon. We've started to see some data that at least the surges in, in some of our areas and some of our data here in Texas shows a potential leveling out of cases and hospitalizations over just the last few days. So we are all hoping uh, across the nation that we will soon see a leveling out and hopefully a decrease in the number of coronavirus cases as we progress through September. Uh, but time will tell. We know that there is always at least a two to four week delay after any action is taken from a public health standpoint to mitigate the spread of this disease and certainly a delay after, say, a major holiday. And we do have Labor Day coming up. And I imagine that people will be grouping together once again. Right. All right. Dr. Hillary Fairbrother, doctor, thank you very much for sharing your expertise with us. Thank you. Have a great one.